Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, for your Patreon cast for the week of November the 5th, it's going to be Jadong vs. Light here on Ground Zero. Should be an excellent one. This is a 2019 or 2020 replay sent to me by RJB, as always, for my recent replay needs. Again, search RJB TV in your YouTube machine and you will find him. He does a lot of fastest map if you're interested in that. And tell him that Falcon sent you. All right, so top right, we have the yellow Zerg player. It is Jadong. And in the bottom right, it is the teal Terran player, Lucifer Morning, otherwise known as Light. So TVZ shenanigans here on Ground Zero should be excellent. I guess while not much is happening in the early stages here as we follow Terry, the Overlord, I rewatched Day 9 Daily 100 today. I haven't seen it in years, but basically it's titled My Life of Starcraft, where Day 9 just talks about his experience with Starcraft as a young person, growing up with it, and winning a major tournament in 2009, 2008, something like that. It's, it's just an hour and 40 minutes of Sean talking to the camera and his passion and his love of StarCraft just bleed through. They bleed through the screen. He loves... Man, it's hard for me to say he loves StarCraft when he totally left it, but I imagine he still watches it. He just doesn't do any content for it anymore, which I wish he did. Like, I get... He said that he stopped as the barracks comes up here for light. And are we going for a third hatch? That's definitely your timing for your 12 hatch. What is this dude? Ah, just scouting. And he's scouting the right way, which is nice. Yeah. like I, He has said he doesn't have the time to keep up with StarCraft at a level where he is happy with the content that he would produce for it. I understand that. I do. As Drone and SCV say hello to each other on the way out. Drone spits in the SCV's face a little bit. A little aggressive there, Drone. I just... I don't know. I just wish a standard timing for the pool and the gas are coming in from Jadong. I just wish he would have maybe one day a week where he just did StarCraft. He just maybe just talked about it or watched a replay from a recent match that he really enjoyed from the pro scene. Like, that was it. That's all I want from him. But, uh... He doesn't. Anyway... Yeah, it's great. If you have not watched the Day 9 Daily 100, just search for Day 9 My Life of StarCraft. And it should pull up the YouTube video for you. It's from 2010. It's old. Like, it's ancient history stuff here. For some of you people, 10 years ago was, you know, an eon ago. For us older folk, not so much. But you should watch it. It's real great. He talks about, he talks about the difference between tricks in StarCraft and good solid strategies. He says one of his first strategies was... He would go, he would only play on this island map that they had back then, and he would just rush Mutas. And he said, either my enemy would prepare for it, they'd have anti-air, or they wouldn't, and they would die. Either I'd lose or I'd win, based on this trick. And that was it. It was just flipping a coin. And then later on, he learned about the concept of, you know, you win StarCraft with good, solid builds, and you execute them crisply, and your timings are on point. And you adjust things based on what your enemy is doing. And you just have to play a whole ton and see every permutation of potential experiences before you get to that point. But once he learned that, he really... That's when he fell in love with the game. It's just, it's fantastic. It's him and Tasteless growing up and loving StarCraft. And their years before they discovered Battle.net, right? So it's just them doing StarCraft. And they had this... Scout reverb opening that they had versus Zerg that they said, you know, it's just that is incredible because the scout can attack ground and air and reavers can handle any, anything that, re that Zerg can do. It's just wonderful. You should check it out. Day 9, My Life of Starcraft. All right. So we're one base in it, by the by. I mean, basically the SCV did not scout this for some time. So I think Light just went safe with it. He's building the command center inside the main base. Went for a factory first, getting vultures with speed. Because he's worried about the links. There's four of them out here. There are four more in production. And I saw Burrow come through. I didn't say anything about it, but the hatchery did show a Burrow research. So that's interesting. Let's see where we go with that. Hydralisk movement coming in. Overlord checking to see, is there an expansion? And there's not. Surprisingly, right? Kakaru! Kakaru! You know, these links aren't... I guess they're going to kill this marine because there's one marine here. 
man, right into mech here from light. And we've yes, we've seen this, man. Right into mech. Oh, more links here. I heard a burrow. Oh, we're burrowing. What is this? Jadong, what is this burrow ling strategy? I don't... At first glance, I'm not feeling great about this. I mean, I guess if the vultures come down this ramp, you can unburrow on them and murder them real good. But they've got speed. They can run from you. I love this bunker placement from Light. It's going to be able to deal with anything that unburrows here, right? And tries to come on up. I mean, you might... Yeah, so he does jump on it before the bunker can finish. But the micro from Light is sick. Oh, it's so sick. Hydras are here, which trade exceptionally well versus vultures. But SCVs are in the mix, causing major problems. But it's, look, 26 to 17 harvesters right now. 26 to 17 workers. Light is up. He's one base in it. He's incredibly oversaturated, but he's got his natural. He can land it eventually. These hiders are containing a bit, as it turns out. We're going for range for hiders. We're getting a lair here off of two bases. A lot of gas is going into hiders. This is definitely not going to be any kind of a mutilisk thing. Oh, I love that turret. Getting oh, shooing away the overlords with a high ground vision is not ideal. And yeah, the overlord has to pull back. You still have some high ground vision, but not as much as you did before. Ah, siege mode coming in. 27. Oh, this is just such an economic advantage for light. Dropship coming in. Oh, I think a spider mine just killed something. Oh, this ling. There was a ling burrowed in there, and the spider mine detected it and killed it. Whoa! Did that just kill, like... Oh my gosh! That spider might... Mm -hmm. We have to see that. Sorry, hold up. We have to see that. There were 27... S there's a ton of SCVs in this mineral line. And there's a burrowed ling in here. And then light through... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that 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 hmm. that was like 12, 13, 14 workers that died there to that spider mine. Uh, there's no like light didn't know. Light didn't know there was a burrowed ling in there or he would have never done that. I think Dude, he spider oh. Jadong, spider mine dragged a spider mine into a clump of workers with a burrowed zergling, of all things. Okay, Light is in a lot of trouble. What a weird, scrappy game this is. It is a spire follow-up on two bases. The second guess, I imagine, is going to come in here fairly soon. As you're going to want that. This drone, probably, this is a third base drone, would be my guess. Although, a bit of a traffic jam here. Where, though, right? Top left, probably. Yeah, the Wraith is hunting for this third hatch. The drone is on a mission to be somewhere where that is not. Uh, yeah, I don't know about this. Just load up and get out of there. Hope the dropship doesn't die because it's not really fast, but it does have the advantage of being able to fly. Third base here. No, no, no. Up the ramp. Okay, so the Wraith has recently vacated the premises, and now the drone can do this. Does he have lurker tech to secure that base? I don't... I haven't seen lurker aspect come through. Dude, I cannot believe that spider mine hit. Like, Light still hasn't recovered. He's at 21 workers. Jadong has an economic lead that he should not have. But that spider mine was a betrayer. I don't... Oh, okay. Well, Spire's done. You can make, I don't know, two or three mutas. Let's make it a couple Scourge to deal with the Wraith. As necessary. Vulture does scout the third base coming up. Sees the timing on it and says... Oh, that must have snucked up just as I got that Wraith out of there. Irradiate coming in pretty fast. This is like really fast science vessel shenanigans. So the Scourge are going to be for the uh, science vessel too. Yeah, so again, not great against buildings, vultures, but they do some damage against buildings, which means they can kill buildings given enough time, which is a dangerous thing for sure. That Wraith just goes, didn't even, didn't even run, man. Almost killed that Overlord, but the Hydra finished him off. Dude, I just... Jadong is in such a great position here. He is only down 7 supply, which is amazing for a Zerg player at this stage of the game. Against an elite Terran player. Oh, the dropship died. That's what it was. Dropship died to the Scourge. 
Is he just trying to hold this with Hydras? I guess he recognizes it's not bio, right? So we're not going to have a bunch of Marines wandering over this way. Okay, so the Science Festival being protected by missile turrets over here. It is, though. It is bio. It was a mech opening transition into bio from light. What a weird idea this is. I kind of love it. Dude, this game is... I had a weird tag. I would give this game a weird tag. Oh, drone transfer. Bad, bad drone transfer. Keep going, drones. Don't stop now. Yeah, he's just securing this third base with Hydras, but does he know? Lurker Aspect is coming in. Okay, so I think he has a generally good idea what's happening. He recognizes there aren't any other factories over here anyway. No factories at all. And that is a 10-minute hive, despite all the shenanigans that have happened already. The timing for the hive is pretty good for Jadong. That's why he is the Jadong, man. He's the Dong. He's here for that. Hmm. All right. So we're at 10 minutes, and Light is just trying to establish his barracks at this point. He's only really had three unit-producing structures for the whole first 10 minutes here. A factory, a starport... And a barracks. I guess he's been trying to get his economy up and running here, too. 38 SCVs to 42 drones. The third base is looking pretty darn good for Jadong. And that, yeah, that lurker aspect is done. Bunch of lurkers are coming up right here in the middle of the map. Three here. I'm surprised there aren't any here. This is a bad situation. The Zerg player's up. He's up in supply at 11 minutes. This is the worst place to be if you're Terran. This means you are down. It means you are down extra down right now. I think Jadong just has this game won at this point in the game. I know it's early. I understand that. But I just think Jadong has map control. He's got the tech that he needs. He's got the lurkers out. He's got a bunch of zerglings. He's got adrenal glands coming in. A defiler round coming in. We've seen what he can do with defilers, guys. We've seen what he's capable of. And I have seen recent complaints on the channel that we don't get a lot of zerglings versus Terran recently. But check this action out. I, re I have not watched this game before, I promise. But it sure seems like Jadong has this game in hand. Which is not a guarantee of a win. But he's got it in hand. Defiler Mound finishing up. Consume's going to start immediately. Look at that. That's how you do, man. And you just Jadong just has enough to be like, we're going to chase you down and murder you. Yeah, man. Losing these two tanks is huge. Two tanks down! The irradiates are... Did you irradiate? Those are not... Oh, bah. The lurker irradiate target firing here is sick. Out of light. It's so good. But losing those two tanks... For a couple zerglings and a couple lurkers is a fair trade for Jadong right now. He's up 97 to 79 supply. I mean, at this point, I think light's got to be thinking about third bases. He needs more Scourge for these science vessels is what he needs. Hey, look, it's Scourge. You need to have him nearby, though, man. You cannot... Oh, oh, juked! No, Marines in positions to handle that stuff. Jadong coming down the left side. Scourge chasing science vessels. None of them connect. No! <laughs> Light. Light's control is too good. I mean, it's him, man. It is Light and it is Flash. You're two incredible Terran players in the world today. Flash is technically random, I know. But, man, so maybe that makes Light the best pure Terran player on Earth. I still think Flash's Terran is probably the best. Ow. 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 Spider-Man dragging through. A couple Marines going. I mean, hey, that's all right. Decent victories there. This Overlord is slow overlording through here for some reason. Plague's being researched. Dark Swarm time. Ready for it? Go. Or, okay, fine. Right there. That's a weird place for it, but I guess it does zone the army out from being able to defend this natural base. And they're kind of out in no man's land right now. Scourge! Oh, it had it! It pulled out of killing that science vessel and died for nothing. What is happening right now? Okay, need another Dark Swarm before you die. Come on. Aw, oh, spider Mine killed it. Reinforcements getting cleared out here a little bit. This Defiler is probably dead. They're not very fast. And you can't burrow because... Well, you just throw up a Dark Swarm in the middle of nowhere. Because there's a Science Vessel. 
Plague is being researched, though, and their fourth base is done for Jadong. Still on two bases. Like, for all the trying to break out here that we've seen from Light, he's still on two bases. He's still down in total supply against the Zerg player, and that is so bad. These lurkers finally die after the, you know, after the Dark Swarm expires there. And Jadong being aggressive, I think he wants to toss down a Plague on this. He's going to try to, maybe here? Nice! Perfectly placed! Oh, the Plague! Ooh. Beautiful Plague there. This group is not happy. The Medics are not happy to have to heal as much as they will. Couple Lurkers sunken defending here at the fourth base. I, I don't know if we're going to get to a third at all from Light in this match. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't see it. I just, that, it's crazy, but that one spider mine hit was everything in this game. Light was in a great position. He had handled the weird Burrow Ling stuff like a pro, hadn't lost hardly anything. And then he throws down a spider mine in his main mineral line and everything goes to death. Three lurkers stacked there. I mean, the healing's been good. The medics have been doing their work. Radiating the poor defilers. All the live long day. Insta kill on that, buddy. I mean, not insta, but essentially it is. Ultraless Cavern coming in from Jadong. Are we going to get two Ultras is the question. They're not going to be a bad answer to these Marines. They're going to be a great answer to these two Marines, honestly. We've had this discussion, you guys. You can beat late game Ling Ultra with Bio, with Marines and medics and science vessels as long as you have a lot of science vessels you can't just do it with marines and medics but you can definitely do it with the science vessel to irradiate those defilers and those ultras and do a large lion's share of the damage to them i mean i don't know light's making some good this is a plague situation he, look at the splits though look at the splits here and the defiler dies for nothing this is... Oh, man. Is Light going to come back and win this thing? He checks this base. No, nothing there. This is a terrible place to expand for Zerg because tanks can set up... I guess, you know what? This this isn't... um. It's not circuit breakers for that. Dude, the Overlords still don't have speed. But still, Jadong, 140 to 101 supply. It's just we don't see it. We don't see it happening at all. Kitness plating coming in. Oh, it radiates on the lurkers there are still four here oh my gosh has a science vessel died today i'm not convinced that it has plague them <laughs> plague them nice plague he got his own overlords which sucks but collateral damage is fine here Ooh, the hydra nice plague Ooh, there he's trying to pick those off with the hydra it does not happen there is still not a third base from Light here at all. Oh, the Zergling's getting good trades all over the place. Firebats jumping into that Dark Swarm and finishing off that Defiler. No problemo. Still, 11 Lings in production. I don't know if I've seen any of the Ultras come through, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, these Firebats are doing their best against the Zerglings, but the upgrades for the Lings are good. That adrenal gland is awesome. Oh, nice science vessel sniped by that Hydra. That's super great stuff. The fire bats in the mix trying to do what they can here. But more and more lings pouring out of these Nidus canals, and that's your good game. Light taps out. And Jadong is your winner in 18 minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, that, uh, boy, that was a match if I've ever seen one. Holy smokes. And, yeah, that was, I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen a game hinge so thoroughly on something so small. I mean, it's not small, right? <laughs> oh, it's not small, but man, that spider mine. That spider mine took light from a winning position to a losing position in one second. In one second. And against Jadong, 
that's all he needs, man. Lurkers, Zerglings, Plagues, and Dark Swarms, and that is it. He didn't even make a single Ultralisk as far as I can tell. But yeah, Light never took a third base because he was so far behind. He would never catch up if he did that. And just tried to kill Jadong with what he had. He got this far, but too many Zerglings, too much Dark Swarm, too much Plague. <laughs> and Jadong is the winner. The timings of the expansions were good. Defending the expansions was excellent. I'm not entirely sure he lost a drone in this game. Maybe one when they were transferring in No Man's Land here, but 62 drones at the end of the game. Adrenal gland. Oh, yes. Five Ultralisks here in the making. Adrenal glands done. That, that was insane. That was a game. That was a game and a half. What a great, fantastic, fantastic Patreon match there. All right, so end of the day, 98,000 points for Jadong, 78,000 for Light, 433 units produced for Jadong, only 200 for Light. If you're going for that, like, six racks play, you need to be closer up here, although Jadong made a ton of Zerglings, so maybe it's harder. It probably is a lot harder to do. Structures raised, none. Nobody lost a building today, which, as a Zerg player, very happy about. Just more gas mine, more minerals, and more total spent. He just had that worker advantage after the spider mine hit, took full advantage of it, and won the game. Good heavens. All right. Well, <sighs> insane. All right, so that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.